Wrapping your meat is a very important step. Now, usually we wrap in tin foil or butcher's paper halfway through cooking to lock in moisture and to also help speed up the cooking process. But what happens when we wrap with seasoning? What we have in front of us are two giant chuck roasts along with a whole bunch of blue cheese powder and umami powder. The plan is to completely cover these roasts with the powders, sort of like we do with wrapping. Will this provide us with the same benefits, but also give us more flavor? Let's find out. Okay, first things first, let's talk about this cut. This is called the chuck roll. As you can see, it is an absolutely massive cut of beef. It comes from the shoulder and it has tons of very unique steaks within. Now we're just gonna get this out of the package. This is a big old cut of meat, people. So this is literally bigger than a brisket. 23 whole pounds here. Okay, yep, the juice is getting everywhere, great. Let's get start to the video. All right, we're gonna clean this up. This is a completely boneless cut of beef. It's a bit thicker towards the back here and tapers away towards the front. And if you're thinking that this front side here looks very similar to a ribeye, you are correct. This is actually the direct extension of the rib roast and it has many of those same muscles. Right here is that prized cat muscle or the spinalis. And we also have what's normally the eye of the ribeye. And just so you can visualize it, I have this dry aged rib roast right here. This is exactly how the anatomy kind of fits together. We have those rib roasts moving to the front of the animal and then it connects to the shoulder which is this guy right here. And as you can see, this is an absolutely beautiful cut of beef with tons of marbling running throughout. So what we're gonna be focusing on here is what's called the chuck eye roll. And that's basically the centerpiece right here. So we're gonna remove it. And as you can see, we have this seam of fat right here, which we're gonna be using as our guide. And what we can do is really just use our hands for a lot of this, following that seam and peeling backwards. literally just peeling away from those other muscles. And as you can see, we really haven't sliced through meat at all, just following in between that silver skin, and here we are. And what we're left with here is the chuck eye roll, and what's left of this chuck underblade, we have this seam right here, you can almost peel it away just like before. And this right here is our fully trimmed up Sierra steak. Very similar to like a flank steak, as you can see, very loose muscle fibers. Just slap it on the grill and make sure to cut against the grain. All right, and what we're left with is one of my top three favorite steaks. And this right here is the Denver. Now it's typically just ground up into like burgers and stuff, but I'm telling you, this right here is by far one of the best steaks ever. Okay, and let's get back to talking about our chuck eye rolls. And for this experiment, we're gonna need three of them. But before we season these guys up, we actually need to remove this front steak here. It's basically the same as a ribeye and should not be slow smoked. These are often called poor man's ribeyes, sometimes Delmonico or also a chuck eye steak, and we're gonna slice them up. Now I could use a regular knife for this, but why use a regular knife when you can use a tuna slicer? That's a knife. My sister got me this for my birthday. It's a hand forged tuna knife. I have no access to tuna right now, so we're gonna use it for this. So I'm just gonna slice off one really thick steak. That is like butter. People always say use the right tool for the job. This is feeling like the right tool right now. This steak here is very similar to a ribeye and I'm gonna save it for myself for some grilling. Okay, and it is finally time to cook. We have our blue cheese, our umami powder, and of course a control. Okay, now what are these two ingredients? To be honest, I'm not entirely sure. Blue cheese in powdered form. It's literally just blue cheese, less than 2% of disodium phosphate and silicon dioxide. That sounds healthy. And over here, we have umami powder. We have all sorts of stuff in here, including salt, dried mushrooms, garlic, tomato powder, natural flavors, dried chili, miso powder, and spices. All forms of umami, which gives you that really umami, beefy, tasty. I have no idea how to describe umami. Tasty, sort of salty. It's not salty though, because it's different. It tastes like umami, okay guys? It tastes like umami. And of course we have to taste them in honor of the cinnamon challenge. Let's go with the blue cheese first. That's delicious. Now I'm also just gonna taste some of this umami powder. Go a little bit less this time. 
Good flavor, kind of tastes like an everything bagel. Now, the first thing we're gonna do is season all of these roasts with a basic beef rub. And this is just gonna be our initial layer of flavor. And this is a pretty big hunk of beef, so it can take quite a bit of seasoning. Now, the cooking plan is to throw these guys on the grill, let them start to absorb some smoke, at which point we'll completely cover wrap our roasts in these seasonings. But even still, I'm gonna start by giving these a little dusting of both of them, just for a little extra flavor to start. And next up, some of that umami powder. We're just making sure to get both sides here and just patting all that flavor in. Okay, and they are all seasoned up. Let's get them on the grill. Set the grill to 250 Fahrenheit. And of course, we're smoking over applewood. Low and slow. Okay, and starting here with the control. And as you can see, we've developed some beautiful color. And for this one, we're just gonna wrap it traditionally with butcher's paper. All right, and for the blue cheese powder and the umami powder, it's time to have a little bit more fun. And it's sort of interesting to see how the blue cheese powder has a bit less of a dark bark, whereas the umami powder, it's a lot more strong. But either way, what I have here are two modified turkey roasting pans. I basically just hacked them up and we're gonna use these as the base of our wrapping situation. And for the blue cheese, I'm gonna start with a nice base layer. Just make it rain the blue cheese powder. Now I'm just gonna place this guy right on there. Okay, not gonna lie, this feels very weird, but we're just gonna completely cover this thing in the blue cheese powder. Oh, man, this is wild, people. I figure more is probably better than less here. It's like a snowman. We're just gonna pat this in, make sure it is completely sealed. I kinda feel like I'm Pablo Escobar or something over here. I'm not sure what I was expecting, this isn't really it. And I just realized I have no idea if this is gonna solidify. Zero clue how blue cheese powder reacts to heat. Either way, let's move on to the umami powder. Once again, just gonna start with a layer. Ooh layer at the bottom. So I realized that this powder is a lot more fine than the blue cheese powder. So I'm actually gonna add a little bit of water here to kind of turn it into a paste. I'm just gonna mix this up. I don't really know if this is gonna work actually. Diarrhea in three, two, one. <laughs> I don't know if we want to show this. <laughs> All right, let's get this thing covered. So it sort of has this like Play-Doh consistency. This video is not going how I was expecting it. And just like that, our roast is literally completely sealed in our umami powder cement. All right, we have successfully wrapped both of the roasts. Is this gonna work? I have no idea, but either way, let's get it on the grill. Back on the grill to finish cooking. And this is what we were left with. All right, guys, it is currently 9.15 a.m. I'm gonna be honest here, you guys are looking at a guy who just slept for a total of 15 minutes last night. I didn't sleep a wink. I couldn't stop thinking about the temperature on these guys, but I'm not gonna complain because it's finally time to cut into these things and they look pretty awesome. And we're gonna start here with the control. And as you can see, we have some really nice looking bark on there. And for the knife, I'm using my machete because we can. That's a knife. Slicing into it, I was blown away by how juicy it was. I haven't always had the best experience with chuck roast, but this looked amazing. So I pulled this right around 195 Fahrenheit, so it's not quite pullable, but it's still extremely tender. This to me is the perfect texture when it comes to chuck roast. Okay, and now it's time for the fun part. We have the umami powder covered. The first thing I'll say is that my theory about wrapping in these powders seems to have some cracks in it. Cracks. Clearly wrapping in powders does not act the same as like a tin foil or a butcher paper, but what really matters is the taste. All right, it's time to bust this thing open. <laughs> this is absurd. Look at this. That is ridiculous. It is a shell, a seasoning shell. and going for the slice. Despite using all that seasoning, the texture on the outside looked phenomenal, and on the inside, this looked even better than the first. So this one definitely seems to be a lot more tender, but I don't necessarily think that has to do with the seasoning, more so a slightly longer cook time. And last but not least, the blue cheese covered roast. 
All right, well, this thing definitely looks wild, but it also smells like mac and cheese. It does have a slightly shell-like exterior, but it is a lot more soft than the previous one. Let's find out what is going on on the inside here. Digging for buried treasure here. This is actually kind of crazy. There was like a soft outer part. Now there's like a shell directly over the meat. Yeah, it's almost like it got melted in. It honestly looked like a fossil. But once again, this thing was insanely juicy on the inside and it sliced through like butter. With our three roasts sliced up, it was finally time to taste. All right, well, there's nothing like some 10 a.m. chuck roast on zero sleep and an empty stomach. So here we go. I'm gonna start here with the control. I'm not gonna lie, I used to be a chuck roast hater, but this is actually phenomenal. It's super tender, very juicy, but a lot less dry than like your standard brisket flat. Okay, and moving on to the umami crusted chuck roast. Wow, right off the bat, that is completely different than the first one. Now that I think about it, it sort of tastes like a ramen spice packet and not in a bad way. There is so much more flavor going on. Do we need to add that ridiculous amount? Realistically not. I don't think it did anything besides give us a bit more flavor. If you're gonna do it at home, and I would highly recommend it, just use quite a bit less. And finally, the one I'm most excited about, we're gonna move on to our I'm calling it mac and cheese, but it's really the blue cheese crusted chuck roast. I hate to say it, but it actually tastes like mac and cheese a little bit. It just has this like undertone of your standard processed cheese. Now in terms of texture, I will say the blue cheese and the umami came out extremely tender and juicy. Was it because of that shell? I'm not entirely sure, but my feeling is that it did help trap in the moisture to allow that to happen. Is it practical? Absolutely not. I'd say in order of preference, I'd probably go with the umami as my favorite. The control is my second favorite. The cheese one is my least favorite. I really hope you enjoyed this video if you are still watching by this point please make sure that you're already subscribed to the channel also like the video it does help me out quite a bit and i'll see you next time